Good morning. Good morning. Um, well, so, uh, Taylor, I, I have uh, watched the the KubeCon Telecom play playlist. Um, yes. There are quite a few topics that's discussed in that, not discussed in this meeting. So I was wondering, is that um, all in scope in this meeting, or is that um, there are a lot of like 5G, you know, edge computing, tier security, all those topics that seems to be not part of this meeting. Uh, yeah, I mean, any of those are, I guess, available to discuss. Um, we have kind of a primary, maybe, goals that we're trying to reach. All of it would be the general topic is exploring telecom and cloud native and then being able to pull whatever you would be useful out of that. So the main three things are, or main couple of things, user stories and, and use cases, that would be, kind of be one area based on those. And then the best practices around that. Um, just digging into a specific area a you know, like a 5G specific topic or looking at a project um, digging in is totally relevant. I think it would be more of after talking about it, then what are we going to get from it as a group and how are we going to use that? So, um, for instance, NEFIO has been a topic we've looked at in the past and we're interested in trying to highlight and pull out best practices for the onboarding of CNS. So those are, I would call those deployment, CICD, and lifecycle management best practices. Their NEFIO is officially focused on network function deployments and the management. It's, it's really, when you look down at it, it's trying to take best practices on managing applications and the dependencies that are running on Kubernetes and how do you make that easier to automate. So this would be like operations teams and that sort of thing. It's not really specific to the telecom and networking they're making it relevant there by focusing on those use cases. But um, what what topics did you have in mind? Yeah, it's a, such a wide topic. Maybe maybe can start with like if we because there's so many videos. I just basically listen to them when like just walking. Is there like if we summarize from all these talks? Is there any like major trend theme? from all those talks? That's what's current status in telecom and cloud native. Major trends? Is that what you're asking? What are the major trends? Yeah, what's the trend and the uh, technology trend, uh, adoption, uh, um, yeah, it's basically another way of saying, I don't know what to ask, basically. <laughs> it's just so many different topics. How do we describe what has been going on in that series of talks? That might be something to, to do in the group. Just we could start writing out some of the stuff and summarizing some of the things that we've seen. Uh, for example, um, the, there are a couple, couple of 5G talks, which uh, have some, some new projects and terminologies have never heard before. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I know there are two projects that's been going on. One is the more mature, the Linux Foundation uh, um, Magma project seems to be a, a kind of established project. 
Um, another project, which is I, my understanding, relatively new, but is kind of more automated, uh, is Open Networking Foundations. Um, uh, Athena, I think if I pronounce that right, is another project. So those are what I know uh, when it's related to um, telecom, private five G. But the five G project that's in the in the um, in the uh, KubeCon session is something yet different. So. Yeah, just curious. Uh, what is what is the actual landscape? What other uh, options if you if a company want to implement private five G, for example? Well, one of the one of the I don't know disadvantages or like how can can we say it? like especially for Magma is uh, that Magma doesn't follow the three G P P. Um, standard. So, uh, yeah, that's why uh, it's pretty hard to use in, com in combination with, um, I don't know, with Nephew or other projects like Silva and all these these um, these other ones. Um, regarding the trends that you mentioned, I think it's it's pretty hard to summarize because. Uh, <laughs> It has been happening in many different areas. Um, so so many so many uh, changes. Um, probably Taylor mentioned just the way to do onboarding things with with nephew is is kind of the the latest one. But the other the other pretty interesting project is um, Silva, which is um, kind of a, also a new way to to to, to try to. Um, Probably standardize the, the, the infrastructure or something like that. So um, there, in, in especially in the telco day, um, it was presented the the use case of um, using OpenStack Tacker, so way to to onboard NF. So that means CNFs and also BNFs, especially BNFs. So. Yeah, it's pretty hard to to just like try to to say like this is this is the right way to to do things like uh, just just picking one single technology is, is um... yeah I think the problem for me is I'm still relatively I'm, I'm just learning the landscape so uh, not only hard to decide which is the right option but not even even know what is the option like what options are out there and what they are. That's the part that's difficult for me to. It'd be great if we, there is a list of options and what the difference is. Like you mentioned, Magma. My understanding, Magma support 4G and will support 5G eventually. So you're mm -hmm. saying that it doesn't need a 3GPP uh, standard. Uh, that's yeah. new to me. Yeah. So those can be a very useful information if there's such a list, even if there's no comment on, you know, I think it's pretty hard to make it like description on which is the right choice because you know different different people have a different choices and the and the, in the involvement of a project whether it's going to be successful have many other factors other than technology choice so it's, uh, i think that's up to the each individual uh, organization to decide which standard to adopt but it'll be great to have a at least a list of choices on what they are that will kind of landscape i think that will be really helpful so, so I don't know if you have checked the the, the list or like the the documentation provided by Anuket. Uh, Anuket also has been done a great job um, creating a reference uh, architecture, uh, especially for the infrastructure. Like um, just in the, this particular area, they have provided a very useful information how to define your your infrastructure. No, I'm not sure is that is that uh, one of the target. Kupong, is that a uh, duck? Can you share the link? Uh, no, it was not presented anything during the KubeCon. Uh, but yeah, I can definitely can include some information there. Yeah, that, that would be great. Yeah, it's just anything. It's a, it, it, telecom is a so vast, <laughs> just different choices. It would be great if there is at least some effort to list some list of choices and what they are. As I mentioned, I, I, I really don't know Magma doesn't meet the S3GPP. I saw it is, according to the description at least, I thought it's a middle of the 4G, 5G uh, standard. Therefore, it will meet the S3GPP uh, standard as well.
So a lot of these are, I don't like Annika, Silva, those are all larger. I don't, it's Phil's uh, project becomes ambiguous uh, saying that word, but they're larger uh, efforts that pull in lots of different technologies and, and sub projects. Um, I would say Silva and and the Annika are larger umbrella projects. Uh, Nefio also is pulling in sub project work. Like they're doing stuff with uh, operator framework and and other things. So then you could say, we are going to use Nefio, or you could say, oh, here's what Nefio is using. Let's just go and take those pieces and we're going to build them out ourselves. Um, so, so the, yeah, I, I, in, the, in the talks in KubeCon, that's where I got the, the terminologies like Silva and uh, what the other one, uh, and, and, Kong, uh, and, and then, uh, yeah, then uh, Nefio, uh, I forgot whether it's part of the talk. Um, uh, are they, for example, question will be, are they equivalent to Magma, equivalent to NNF, uh, uh, or, or the Ether, and uh, or, or they're, are they overlapping, or are they, which one is that included in which one? I think that would be all useful information. I, I wouldn't say they're the same. So Magma is the core, whatever, whatever you're going to, I don't know. I think it depends on what the name would be, but if you could, if you maybe say the five G core pieces, how do we build those? And part of them are following three GPP, and part of them are doing instead of using protocols from three GPP, they're doing other protocols that they think are going to have advantages. But it's trying to build that core. And um, Nefio is trying to build tools that help with the deployment of network functions um, onto Kubernetes. And, and I think OpenStack, if I recall right, they have some OpenStack pieces, but how do you deploy them into cloud environments and, and handle that lifecycle management of the, the deployment and upgrades and stuff like that? Uh, future, I think, is around the upgrades and stuff. They're, right now, they're more focused on first bringing it up and make sure the network, network and everything. And then Annika and Silva, I think I would kind of put those closer together, even though Silva actually includes Annika as a at least the reference and maybe the testing as a sub piece. But those are more focused on building out, here's a entire platform to run, uh, here, here's how you can build out your platform that's based on Kubernetes and how you could run workloads. So those are taking in a lot more than Nefio, which is just the, the portion that says, okay, you have an environment, let me target it and do deployments there. Um, and then you have projects that would be sub pieces of all of that, where I'm saying like Istio and um, eBPF showing up in lots of different projects. But then you could say those have their own strong communities in and of themselves. If you go and look at something like uh, Das Schiff from Deutsche Telekom, it's a it's a framework for deploying and managing a Kubernetes environment target for specifically for telecom workloads that's then based on the patterns and the uh, GitOps uh, type of deployment and management patterns and that uses 
sub projects that you also see in these others, like stuff that you make if you go look at Anakit or Silva or even Nefio. Well, there's going to be an overlap on some of those. Like there's some stuff from EBPF and the DOS Chef. Now they mainly use it for filtering and pattern matching of what are the things that I'm about to deploy versus stuff like um, acceleration or security benefits and other things that I see used, but they have those. So again, those sub projects, like knowing what people keep using again and again, and it shows up across multiple umbrella projects, these larger ones, if you're seeing those sub projects show up again and again, it's probably a good indication that there's more agreement in the community, both cloud native and networking slash telecom, that those projects are, they're finding them to have enough value and use right now for implementations. Um, and I probably, if, you know, if you're looking at implementing versus just using something off the shelf, um, that includes all of it, then knowing why they have those there is a good idea because I do see things that have changed over the last, you know, like 18 months or so where some things have been pulled out and a new, a, something else was plugged in. Yeah, thank you, Taylor. What, what, what do you have described? Uh, well, first of all, is there actually a recording for this call? I cannot find it on YouTube. Because um, what you just described in the last few minutes, I just, it's just overwhelming uh, information for me. So, but very helpful if it's uh, put in the, at least in the, 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 the meeting notes. And that will at least give me a, a place to start to look for and compare the different project you just mentioned. Yeah. We haven't had the CNF working group call in a month with all of the holidays and KubeCon. They are recorded. This call is recorded and they do get posted to YouTube. Sometimes there may be one missing, but we can uh, request that those get uploaded as well. Uh, thanks, Lucina. She's just posted into the chat the link to the playlist on YouTube. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go uh, listen what to what what you just talked about. It's a, yeah, it, it's a, it's a quite a lot of information and uh, it's a good starting point. Yeah, I think it'd be great if uh, the discussion like fall in on, on the same thread and just get a more understanding of uh, you know different choices and how it relates to basically if I the next coupon I'll be able to follow why those folks are talking in, in this uh, thread. Yeah, <clears throat> the other thing that I was thinking is about um, usually, for example, NFIO is almost one year older like i mean com compared with other projects this is very young project so um th there is a lot of expectation there's a lot of um, people like uh, wants to to use it because it has been facing for similar issues um but also that means that there is a lot of um opposition especially to to implement it or try to especially in in brownfields like someone who has been using X and Y technologies, try to uh, re-implement or like try to replace all existing solutions with a new promise or a new technology it could be hard to to to, to try. Like um, I don't I don't know what is what is your situation in this case. If you have like a some um, brownfield or legacy um, deployment. Or if you are trying to create like something from scratch, like a new greenfield deployment, definitely that that changed a lot uh, the the decision that you 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 can take it. So I'm yeah, also I'm a, I, I want just more of a just a really pure interest in understanding the the, mm -hmm. the landscape and and, and technology because uh, I'm a I'm a 
database guy and uh, just interested in networking and, uh, and and telecom being really the cutting edge in a way in a, in the telecom networking revolution right now yeah so i just like to understand what's the uh, what is going on in this world that's basically in dry and it's just so confusing sometimes okay yeah yeah even in that case like also it's pretty hard for for um for telecoms if you talk about the 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 to say to, to have a stateless uh, um cnfs or applications it's pretty hard for for for, for, for telecoms to to achieve that um particular goal like uh i think that we have discussed discuss it before right taylor like about the trying to achieve a stateless um cnfs in in the group or i, I don't remember mm, i can't recall either yeah but Definitely, definitely, as you described, Victor, um, there is a lot of transformation in this particular um, industry, which is very quite interesting to to take a look, a closer look. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for all the answers. So uh, I think I got my enough answer for today, at least. Okay, uh, Taylor, should, um, I, I would like to bring a particular topic that I was thinking, uh, especially last week when I was uh, working with Nephew. Um, the thing is like, um, in, in, in Free 5G, I mean, Nephew is using Free 5 GC as a, as a, as an example, how can they use all these uh, operators and technologies? One of the the requirements that Free Five G has for doing deployments, they, they require a specific um, kernel module. So all the worker nodes has to have that particular kernel module pre-installed or like pre pre uh, or have it before any um free 5 gc uh, installation so the big the biggest question is how like um what is the cloud native way to 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 have that kernel module brain solid like i mean basically there are there are a couple of ways to achieve that so the first one could be like maybe pre big big cake um so print all the, the or create your OS image or the, the worker nodes with all those kernels um, uh, modules print solid and loaded. So in that way, when you bring up your cluster, it is in compliance. So is is I guess the optimal way, but I don't know if that's that's a the cloud native way to to achieve that. The second one is using configuration tools like ones that you have installed your cluster like your Kubernetes cluster you create Ansible or Chef or whatever configuration tool that you use and manage the installation of your um, kernel modules um, but the, the third one which is also quite interesting is um, well probably yeah third one is is using like a like the Kubernetes daemon set and try to load your kernel module, which obviously privilege container and mount the, the module in that way. I know that there is a fourth option, which is also probably using like a, like a Red Hat uh, solutions. Um, I think that they have like a something called, um, it's kind of a plugin, like I remember exactly the name, it's maybe Kubernetes kernel module or something like that, which is a, a, custom, a custom resource definition or like using more uh, generic um, way to load kernel modules. 
but <clears throat> I, I would like to to discuss a little bit the, that third option, like 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 using um, your own um, methods, like like using demon set with combination of um, uh, a custom privileged container when it contains the the kernel module. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know what do you think. Like, uh, do you think that have you ever seen any particular case how to manage the kernel modules in a cloud native environment? Yeah, I can't really think of a a project or some set of community standards on how you would do that. Yeah, usually it's I not. Can think of, of ways that you would do it in a cloud native way, but that's just off the top of my head how you would kind of model it using different tools. It, it seems like um let's see there's going to be modules that are going to be common to have on deployments and looking at some of the kubernetes production deployment tools for bootstrapping clusters and then setting up a production environment we may see something there some of them may be less cloud native and just here's how to bootstrap and not worrying about normal system deployment versus making it um like ongoing where you can swap in and out or whatever else we're thinking but we could look into some of those I'm trying to think of one of the names yeah, exactly. Because even even in that particular case where, I mean, where you create like a demon set and the, the driver container, so that requires uh, a privileged container, so which is something that we have uh, encouraged not to use it, especially in terms of like a security uh, vulnerability and all these things. So, but definitely definitely it's like a possible scenario like um one of the major arguments is like especially in the public clouds where you don't have control over you, your um working nodes so it seems like that's a preference for from major of the people like try to to use demon set to to, to provision some Host requirement or like yeah, host requirements. Um, instead of like when you have like a um, a private cloud where you have full control over your worker nodes and you can like pre be cake uh, some OS images and use it on deploy like a. I don't know. I, I mean, I just I just want to bring that particular topic because I, I found it interesting last week, and I was facing especially how to tackle that in, in a more cloud native way. Like, that. yeah. So, some of that seems like it would be. I don't know if that's the right word, but more relevant for edge deployments. So that would be maybe related to private 5G deployments. If we're talking for like telecom use cases, so pr private 5G and edge overlap pretty strongly. Mm -hmm. And I think the solutions that people are looking at for edge deployments would probably be relevant with regards to worker node requirements and being able to set them up 
with whatever um, attributes you want on those. So then you can use at the work, the workload itself, I think is pretty good as far as using practices like affinities and taints to have your applications go to the right worker node. And then it would be, does the worker node have the right set of um, host capabilities and everything else? So then if you're using just SRV is one thing, but if it's SRV plus various kernel modules or whatever it may be to, you know, it could be like security or something on different things, but it seems like a lot of that would be more common on edge where you're going to have more pieces all together. Um, and the, the area that I could think of where a, a project um, maybe an umbrella project nearly, I guess you could think of it, would be cluster API. Mm -hmm. So I, I was hearing around KubeCon and over the past like six months, more tel telecom companies, the vendors and the um, CSPs talking about trying to either directly leverage or get things working with cluster API, you know, two, two or three years ago, there was, wasn't as much support for some of the stuff that was considered bootstrapping new host and bringing them in a new node. That support is pretty strong now. Um, it's been there for a lot of the cloud providers getting new nodes ready but there's been a lot of work on bare metal. And I believe that there's work around that for like the edge type of use cases with cluster API and related projects. Um, the sub project cube ADM would be one of them, but there's other projects that are related to that. So that would probably be where to look into when we're talking about how do you get has some kernel modules and other capabilities uh, enabled on the host. And then at that point, you can have, you know, it could be tying into daemon sets that are doing things as, as one thing, but various sidecars and stuff that are taking advantage. And then you can start using all the other normal workload stuff like those affinities and everything yeah uh, even even for nepia nepia yo um yeah that is it's almost like uh i mean i cannot guarantee anything but it seems like a cluster api is going to be the way to provision the the h cluster like the the regional clusters so um yeah i have investigating that use case and yeah that uh, this cluster api provide us the level of abstra abstraction and also the it, it follows the what is it the, the, the name um the krm um, model like that they're looking for so yeah so, so it's going to be quite interesting once that you have the, the cluster pro provisioning by um, cluster API, is there a way to hook any post provision methods or things like add those um, special use cases like uh, kernel modules or any additional plugins? I think the idea is, at least whenever I was looking at it more um, a, a couple of years ago, more heavily, when we were doing the CNF test bed specifically and looking at what were the capabilities of cluster API to allow 
expanding and adding to a cluster all the way down to configuring like how do you how do you bring in and configure a a network switch to add maybe a whole set of new host servers and connect them in and and have those type of connections and potentially different networks and everything else so how do you provision those sort of things but doing it in a cloud native way so those are like bigger goals and longer topics than some of the earlier ones with bringing in nodes on systems like uh, cloud providers where you already have apis but those were there and and I, I know that some of the provisioning was already happening for bare metal um with like the um a, f a few of the yeah, like Tinkerbell. And... Yeah, Tinkerbell and everything else from Equinix. But it's it's that sort of thing. When you get it far enough and it's able to handle it, then the idea is leveraging an API for being able to say, hey, go and do these sort of things. And now you could have daemon sets that actually are communicating with an API that's doing well it's basically cluster api but not thinking of just the the tooling around it but you have a a cnf that needs to be deployed and i guess you have management daemon sets or whatever it's going to be i'm i'm guessing it would probably be some type of mm -hmm. it seems like it would be some type of service that's between system services and the non-privileged cns that would maybe proxy requests or something i i don't know exactly what what it would look like but you wouldn't you'd still want to try to promote the idea of applications shouldn't have direct access to cluster api but they should be saying hey i want this type of capability, can you give it to me? And the cluster says, oh, I don't have any of those worker nodes right now, but we see them in our inventory list or let me go ask the hardware would be the other thing. So when you're looking at something like an easier one would be a cloud provider, AWS or Azure or whatever, and then you can literally go say, we need a machine that has this type of hardware. Provision it, okay, add it. Now we have a set of worker nodes with that type. And now we can actually go back and tell the application, okay, we're ready, or we're gonna schedule you on these automatically. And I think that that sort of, automatic provisioning of new nodes that have the capabilities would be the same sort of thing that you'd want to do with provisioning of nodes and putting kernel modules on so so basically what you have described is particular this uh, this area right uh -huh. so when when you are requesting a particular cnf which doesn't meet the existing requirements and that's that's the connection that we are trying to do with the in this case with cluster api requesting the infrastructure and once that this particular requirement has been met so we can provision the rest of the CN, then dnfs like a i mean whatever <laughs> right Uh, when you mention Tinkerbell, that's another area that's interesting because uh, Tinkerbell is basically came from uh, uh, sponsored by Equinix, so he, which has a pretty big player in the in the in data center business. Um, but there are several other options. I'm not sure there are, actually there are several other data center players. They don't seem to have the same uh, hardware provisioning um, solution, but there are things like uh, cluster bare metal cluster from the former OpenStack, I guess, and also some other, um, several other hardware provisioning. So is there any talk on like, uh, not talk, I just, I guess, understanding of those, 
what is optional other than of course what public cloud provider provide um, just from bare metal perspective, it, 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 other than Tinkerbell, anything else that's being used by the telecom or by the private 5G market? Hmm. Mm. Like another um, alternative to, to think about like more cloud native way. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Met metal. metal Was it three? metal three? Yeah, Metal 3 is, uh, I think it's, it's a former uh, OpenStack, what is, I forgot the name. It yeah. came from that, yeah. So Cluster API has a Metal 3 support, um, support. yeah. Cube Spray would be something also to consider um looking at since it's used by sig testing and some of the pieces in there would point you to projects that are used by others i think it's still used by sig testing for deploying clusters for all the kubernetes builds and extensive ADE testing and everything. It does production clusters. I mean, there's several other pieces in SIG testing, but they refer to it for doing production clusters. I think it, the, I don't know what organization in the industry do for example, for DevOps, Google do a lot of survey, um, you know, what is being used, what's best practice and lesson learned. I don't know for telecom, is there any people uh, doing that uh, for telecom? Yeah, during, during the switch, the, the, during the, the Cloud native, they um, Swiss Swisscom was like doing a presentation, which uh, I really I was a little bit surprised that they were sharing <clears throat> all the technologies and a little bit about the, 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 the decisions that they make to to have in their own infrastructure. It seems like they are like not using a particular. Um, Technology, but basically, uh, what I what I what I saw they were like using Jenkins with Ansible and building something in house. Um, so probably uh, I'm I'm just guessing most of the telcos are like they have created like their own um, tools for for provisioning that 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 um, that infrastructure. So. It, I, I, I couldn't say like there is a predominant um, technology or like like a, a, a good winning a good winner in that particular area. Probably some of them are just using portion of the, the tools or like creating something in house. Uh, I mentioned Dosh Chef earlier. That's uh, Dosha Telcom and the Weaveworks company, they're, um, they're behind are promoting GitOps patterns. I mean, the, I think that there's a whole group that there's projects and stuff all around GitOps, but GitOps is um, older than Kubernetes as far as the patterns. They're, from DevOps, earlier DevOps days, but there's different companies that are adopting a lot of those patterns. And um, 
Deutsche Telekom would be, they have some open source projects out there. So that's somewhere to look. Orange, um, they have a whole open source labs and they have a lot of different projects. I don't remember what they said specifically about their platform. Um, I know there was various talks that mentioned but I don't, I don't know that there's something equivalent to the, like DOS Chef, which is trying to build a cloud platform that it is literally being used, my understanding, for running some workloads at Deutsche Telekom. And Orange has something. I don't know if they have like, here's a, a larger umbrella project, which I, you can kind of look at DOS Chef like that. And there's a bunch of sub pieces like their operator um, related project and several others for DOS Chef. So you can look at that one and, and break it out. I'm sure that Orange has something based on what their talks have been and, and discussions. I don't know if there's something that that's listed out there publicly right now, but that could be something we could look at. Uh, Azure for operators is heavily influenced by AT&T work that was happening a few years ago. They were building out a Kubernetes-based platform, and it was like a, a V2 or V3 of, of a, a platform that was OpenStack-based in the past, and it was a mix, a hybrid, and then a lot of those um, core people that were on those projects went to Azure and the specifically our Microsoft and the Azure for Operators team. So anything that's like publicly talked about from Azure, I think would be relevant for both platform and deployments and workloads. Those would be the a couple of them. Um, let me see, Swisscom. We we had some a lot of Swisscom people at the Cloud Native Toko Day and the community gathering. Um, mm -hmm. I know that they're doing stuff. They had a whole open source lab before. That went away, but they have a new open source telecom area. But I'm not sure like what what has been made publicly available projects. They had a, a, I don't know if it was GitLab or what it was before, but a lot of that, that was available to look at. The orange stuff you can go through. I just don't know how organized from what I've seen. It's kind of what projects are available. They have the, and I put a link into the, and be the SR6 and other routing related stuff that orange makes available. You can go look at those and they contribute. Um, maybe another area would just be looking at who's involved with the different directly putting some people over on some of the other projects. There's a lot of the CSPs are have a lot of involvement in Silva and Nefeo. I'm saying somebody from different service providers there. And then in the Kubernetes um, side, like seeing who's actually attending SIG or the, I can't remember, I always get confused if it's a working group or a SIG. I think it's a working group. Um, the multi-network working group, multi, so that, encompasses it's going to be a, a higher level from what CNI is that includes CNI. It's from what I saw in the past, it was a lot more activity from vendors that were involved, but there were a, a few people from service providers, but that would give kind of an indication of where those service providers, at least a portion of them are putting some efforts and then you look back and, and see where they are. Um, I know that Bell Canada, for instance, is very involved and interested in NEFIO 
and eBPF. And then, um, you know, the DOS chef included eBPF and GitOps, but I also saw some, some interest in like cluster API uh, for more to extend the provisioning capabilities. So, well, coming back to the meeting, we have eight minutes left. Uh, so, any, any ideas for like, the, or we should just conclude the meeting right now or like, what do you suggest? I think we can conclude and coming back, we do have best practices that we had drafted. Um, we never really got to a working session with all the other activities at the community gathering, but it was pretty successful. Maybe we can look over some of the things that were talked about and either continue with the current drafts or dig mm -hmm. into some of the other topics. Maybe at the, the next call. Yeah, by the way, next week, uh, there will be the, the Open Source Summit in Vancouver. And oh, yeah. during that time, there will be a, the, what is the name? One, one, sum, one regional summit or? So it's, clear. it's going to be the, a, a mini version of the, <laughs> the one summit. For, for those uh, presented at all, um, um, KubeCon, um, Telecom um, area, is it possible for some of them to present here as well, just to follow up or any anything new update? Sure, um, can look into that, maybe reach out. If you have any contacts, anybody, Victor, then, or <laughs> Victor. Uh, if uh, if you had any ideas or specific ones that you're interested in, then feel free to either reach out or at least drop a note in to the working document. But happy to reach out to some of them myself and see if someone's interested. It, I think, other than just coming and talking here, it would be nice to have a a goal with some of it, like the NFIO, um, Victor M, we had talked about highlighting and looking at those best practices. So then if we're coming and talking to NFIO, we can say, hey, what are some best practices that y'all recommend for deployments? And then it focuses on those best practices, ideally, rather than just a technology overview. Maybe, maybe just uh, for the sake of uh, saying, kind of a way for them to promote their their project in the CNCF community, and then be part of the future landscape. I, I'm down for that. I think if we're going to do something like a um, overview of projects or whatever, then we probably should promote that which we can do on some of the places like there's a a a couple of twitter accounts for the cncf um telecom related stuff so we can promote hey this group is going to come talk on this date and then maybe we get a larger number of people that are coming
can talk with the other co-chairs and figure something out. But that sounds like a, a, a good idea to have some of them come in. As long as we have um, have it promoted and then I would like to have like, where are we going from there? Not just a, it's, it's not just a, a one hour of a, one project, but maybe breaking it up, have a couple of projects and then a follow up or how does this benefit the community? All right, anything else before we end the call? No, I guess that's it. Thanks. Thanks anyone for attending. Thanks. All right, cheers. Bye-bye.